Hello, my name is Brandon, and welcome to Retro Reactions, a place where I experience amazing music from the 70s, 80s, and 90s for the very first time. And today we're going to be traveling all the way back to 1986 to listen to Domino Parts 1 and 2 by The Amazing Genesis. And of course, that includes In the Glow of the Night and The Last Domino, two songs that were combined into this one song. Really excited to check this one out. It's from the Invisible Touch album, and there's only two songs I don't know on the album. So after this, I'll be down to uh, anything she does. Anyway, uh, lyrics by Tony Banks, also very exciting. And those lyrics were inspired by the 1982 Lebanon War. You guys also tell me that this is like prog Genesis meets 80s Genesis. Perfect. Can't wait. Anyway, if you're new here, welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button as well as the notification bell to join the Retro Reactions community where it's all amazing music all the time. All right, here we go.
Of course, of course they would do that. Why wouldn't they? <laughs> Instantly in love with part one in the glow of the night. Beautiful music. It was a surprisingly light feeling, you know, in the intro, uh, really through the whole song. Uh, and this is supposedly a song about war, question mark, or is it? I'm not sure. Maybe that was just some inspiration, but really did not expect that. Expected much darker. I loved what I got, though. So much musical goodness. There was a really cool synth tone that they were playing a melody on. I think I made a gesture. It almost sounded like New Age sounding. That was really cool. I loved those keyboard stabs, the quick booms right in your face. Did not expect that. Really, really cool. I don't think Genesis has ever used that in the songs that I've heard, maybe, but I just can't recall any instance like that. So that was a really nice surprise. Uh, the bass, really, really deep here. I think Mike's playing a real bass guitar in this one. So really enjoying that. That whole first part, very different sounding, you know. Just when I think they can't give me something different, they deliver again. It almost didn't feel like Genesis at some point, so that was really, really nice. Phil's vocals absolutely shining here. He's obviously a vocal goat by this point. Uh, I swear I heard a kalimba. I love that instrument. And I heard something going on kind of mid to left. It sounded like a kalimba that's kind of like a thumb piano. I'll have to investigate more. Then when everything slowed down, we got to that nice slow section. You guys know exactly what that did to me. It got me super emotional, super fast. It's amazing how Genesis can change my emotions in an instant, you know. I'm feeling this way about a song, I'm loving it. They take me here and boom, I just like well up inside with emotion. Crazy. In that slow section, I got slight Home by the Sea vibes, so that was really cool. A nice throwback to a song that wasn't too much before this, I don't think. Then, of course, this huge, jaw-dropping, unexpected explosion of sound leading us into the last domino, obviously. It was super fast, and it sounds like things are about to get crazy, so let's go back a little and experience that beauty again.
had to play a little bit of that one of my favorite genesis songs throwing it all away could not be any more different than domino right before it it's like unbelievable i had to hear it for myself <laughs> so much intensity so much energy in the second song you know the last domino the whole thing was an incredible epic and intense journey for sure yeah, the last domino was so fast, so chaotic, but very, very 80s. And of course, my favorite decade of music, so I'm going to resonate completely with that. I love how they added some dark, eerie sounds, you know, just like taking us to a new part of the story, but a dark part of the story. I still think there's some kind of war involved, but we'll get to that. Uh, so many great chords going on, repeating throughout that, especially the certain two chord progression really got to me. Amazing drum fills, classic fill right there. Uh, I completely and instantly can see why this one is amazing live. I've read that it's even better than the studio, and I can totally envision it. Insanity uh, delivered in the live setting, I can just imagine. I wrote down in huge letters, so prog. I mean, it's so clear. I totally get it now, but it's kind of an 80s type of prog, an updated prog, but it's still classic Genesis, and it's what they did and do best. Like I said, amazing vocals by Phil, uh, very reminiscent of his solo work in the 80s. I should know this, but I wonder if his solo albums overlap time-wise with the Genesis albums during the 80s. Uh, possibly, you know, they tend to go do their own solo thing and then come back, so it would make sense if, you know, this is right when he's doing his solo work. Such power and energy in that last section, you know, very triumphant feeling as well in the music. Really nice, really grand, really epic. Um, there was this really cool sound I got to mention on the left and right. It felt like some kind of animals like biting at my ear. That was really cool. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. So let me know what that was. Probably a guitar or maybe a synth, but I would think a guitar with some kind of effect. Really, really unusual there. Everyone was at full throttle at the end, including Phil and his vocals. And, you know, it was such a thick sound around my ears by the end. Really, really nice. Very, very memorable. Okay, just checked out the lyrics. I think they're definitely open to some interpretation. Uh, to me, it's about, you know, a man being quite alone. His love is now long gone. He needs her desperately and almost convinces himself that she is still there. Uh, chaos is ensuing outside in some kind of form, and it's all slowly creeping into his mind. Uh, death is all around him, but ultimately he survives. 
It's not yet his time. He has to live on and put on a happy facade, despite everything he's been through. But when that time comes, he will have no say in the matter and will have to exit the earth. It's interesting that Phil kept singing the line, Do you know what you have done? It's repeated many, many times, and I want to know what your interpretation of that is. I think it's maybe uh, discussing, you know, all the damage he has caused to his emotions by leaving, either by choice or through death. I'm not sure. Uh, we know it's his love, but I don't know if she left him intentionally or if she left the earth as well. Uh, really deep song, really apocalyptic in a way, really emotional. Just so much going on there lyrically and musically. Yep, definitely was as epic as you told me. Therefore, it has to get the Epic Platinum Record Award. Yes, for Domino Parts 1 and 2, In the Glow of the Night and the Last Domino, by Genesis 1986. Thank you so much, Phil, Mike, and Tony. All right, that's it for now. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment down below. If you wish to chat about this song or anything Genesis, would love your feedback on this one. So you take care, stay safe, stay hydrated, and remember to let peace, calm, and light into your day and night. And I'll see you next time in the past.